Hey guys, what's going on? Third Street Reactions here. We're back. I'm Shane. Zach. We're back here with the Star Wars Clone... Uh, uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars, and we're watching in chronological order, and this is episode 40... I can't remember. Do you remember what happened last time? It was a good one. Well, Grievous and Asajj launch an assault on Kamino to try yeah. to take out the clone program, to take out the DNA archive, yeah. the master DNA sample, whatever they had from Django. Yeah. Which, didn't that break down over time? Um... I don't know what you know. <laughs> I know what I've taken. Like, evidently, my drunken ears weren't so fucking numb. To everything that well, I had to Star say. Wars: The Bad Batch. It gets into kind of clone templates and you know stuff like that. I think you just mentioned them in passing, like just kind of like, well, how is genetic entropy? How the yeah, like them using it over time has yeah. slowly broken his DNA down. Well, genetic entropy is a thing. Um, in Star Wars, there is something that happens. <laughs> It's, it, it talks about, I think, in, in uh, length uh, for Star Wars The Bad Batch, but that is a while from now for Zachary. So uh, it was a pretty cool episode. And one thing I remember about it was, like, I think, like, the machinery that the Separatists are using. Like, oh, like um, crash landing their ships. Yeah. And then they use that to build these attack ships. It was a great tactic, yeah. Yeah. But that being said, we are going to jump in. We have a new one. Uh, chronologically, I can't remember, but it's Season 3, Episode 4. Aaron Papanoidon is caught in a deadly... Papanoidon. You recognize him? No. All right. Who is he? You'll... Maybe you will. <laughs> Count Dooku has come forward offering... A... An SH figure arts figure of him. Oh, for real? That I sent you. Oh, yeah. It was badass. It, it's a... Like, I'm not as much of a fanboy of his... I, I love Christopher Lee. Yeah. I'm not as much of a fanboy of the character as it was when we were younger. Yeah. But the figure looks so fucking good. Yeah, I, I thought... They, they elected because they used a lot of the same design from the Clone Wars animated micro series. Yeah, and I'm thinking like especially with Dooku, and I thought it's great. Wes H. Figuarts didn't like that though. I don't know why they did then. <laughs> he didn't. He has a realistic look. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't click on it yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's crazy. George was thinking about all like the Senate and everything 40 years ago, and how Palpatine just destroyed it all. You know. No way that Pantora will ever have dealings with the Separatists. The Trade Federation has just been so renegade for the past 13 years. Just keep letting him do it. Please, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. No, it's, that voice. It, yeah, it's George Lucas. <laughs> All right. From Revenge of the Sith. Well, George Lucas doesn't sound like that. He does not, he yeah. He doesn't look like that either in terms of his uh, figure. Yeah, because that character, Revenge of the Sith, granted, it's a couple years from now. Yeah. It was a little rounder. So, are the only people that speak with an American accent in Star Wars basically Anakin, Leia, Luke, and Han? I guess other than uh, what's his name, the guy that Woody Harrelson played. Yeah, Finn does in, uh, episode, in the oh, new trilogy. Okay. Yeah, I forgot about the new. Yeah. And so does uh, Oscar Isaac's character. Yeah. Lando. And Lando, yeah. Did you see that? And George asks James Earl Jones to use an American accent, although sometimes it, the Britishness leaks through. Sometimes it's the R is kind of the way he stresses yeah. it. Yeah. But I don't think I don't think it's very British. I feel it's more like, like kind of drawn out, dramatic kind of. Yeah. It's not like the fucking Imperial soldiers. No. The old big guy. <laughs> you know, if you were hired to kidnap someone would you go in for all the scare tactics like turn the lights off or like run in the background <laughs> yeah just stun them yeah like stalking your prey jeez I, I love them in animation dude. Look, dialogue is always so much better yeah. I don't want to fucking do that can't get involved in kidnapping or slavery <laughs> I didn't exactly come here to free slaves. Papadoya, he's based off of a real human. So you see how he looks more like George. And then yeah. if you, I mean, his daughter, I'm not sorry, not, not his daughter, but Senator Chuchi, eyes are a little bigger. Yeah. They do that with girls, though, because yeah. the son's eyes are like Yeah, you guess you're right, yeah. The girl carried like Disney. Yeah, Disney princess are big They're ass. Like big fucking eyes. Yeah. He yeah. looks like someone you would not want to trust with the situation. I know. He reminds me of this actor, I can't remember, but in Seinfeld in the 90s, he played this character that was Jerry's friend. 
and he annoyed the hell out of Jerry. Looks like he's based on Tatooine. And what are we waiting for? He's going down a bad path. So you see him as a child in The Phantom Menace. Terrible. But there was a deleted scene where he's making fun of Anakin, and Anakin beats the shit out of him. And qui just watches. So do you feel better? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Trying to teach him a lesson, but I think it was just funny how he didn't stop him. Yeah. Go to the Senate and run out the Republic. Then we could His? discuss how quickly yeah, we yeah. can resume commerce. Where are the people? Like the things that just wiggle all the way across? Look like at Rodians, they look like stars. I know. Yeah. It looks cool in terms of character design. Yeah. It's like, how do they see out of them? It's like a goat. Like goats have the big hourglass yeah. looking eyes. Yeah. Like how do those things Ahsoka see? Ahsoka looked like really cool there. She did. You know one thing that's so great about the Phantom Menace is when Darth Maul is just standing there. Oh, yeah, the fucking horns, though, and like, everything about his hood, yeah. like, his whole look, though, that's what made that movie so appealing when I first saw it. Like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. You remember? I don't know if you felt that way. I certainly that's did. That's how I felt when I first saw it. Well, I certainly did, yeah. I don't scare easily. Sniffing little shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't scare easily. What's interesting... Hey! Rhoda. Yeah. Don't play with your food. Stinky, but Rhoda's his real name, I think. Rhoda the Hut. Yeah. Where's the at come fucking Return of the Jedi? I don't know. I think, honestly, I think that's a story they can tell still. You need Greedo to us. Now, this man who looks like George is incredibly insightful in this episode. Yes, he is. <laughs> it's a, looks like the same room from The Phantom Menace. That the dio uh, dioxin. Yeah. <laughs> in The Phantom Menace, he, he threw on the floor. It's Chats cube. Greedo, baby, there you are. Yeah. You will let me pass. I will let you pass. You look kind of cool like that. Yeah. We're going to talk to Jabba about this. Good. You know what's interesting is in episode four, they go in the detention area and they weren't. Going, there was them. yeah, there was a security alert. Figured the Death Star would have better technology than these guys. Yeah. I have to say, Jabba benefits from the transition to animation. I think. Yeah. Kind of looks like something that would be in Wind Waker. Yeah, he does. But I do like. I didn't like him in the movies. Oh, I love him in the movies. Yeah. I, I'm not saying he's better. I'm saying he's he just a benefit. I think. I love how Jabba. Is like the law too. Yeah. Like even Qui Gon wanted to get them involved because they they do bring order. They're just also you know they just want to sell their spice. Yeah. Looks like Boba. Thing. Yeah. The Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. It's a long story. I know. Get for it, bastard! He's a badass. I know. Is that a... Yeah, it looked like even though he didn't have a hammer on the yeah. laser pistol. It is kind it. of... It looks like a Western revolver. Shot him in the arm. Yeah, it's all the same. It has come to our attention that the ugly head of the Separatists <laughs> has once again raised itself in the ranks of our very own trade federation. Are there the guys in the Wardian too? Because he has different lips. Two. Yeah, they're no more than there's they have, like we've seen a couple different looking ones. Like we've seen like a fat, weird looking one. Yeah. Uh, well, the this, ones from the Phantom Menace look like that guy. Like, yeah. That guy. With the lip and the guards. Yeah. Those two had the, the sharp looking the, 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 yeah, they're no more than they're just a different model. Like like clearly a different animation model here. But yeah, they just they always try to make it look a little different. Which is weird because it, it's a very stark contrast. Yeah. And facial features. But. Um, like the 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 one thing I think is like the weak waves. Uh, they all look really similar except Hondo. Like he he looks pretty different in some ways. Yeah, I mean he has the he has the goggles on though. And yeah. A little more flamboyant. Yeah. yeah. But uh, his overall person like look though. Yeah. All right, so we got a kind of a bunch of stuff here. What'd you think? 
I liked it. Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. I yeah. liked uh, with Chuchi and... Uh, yeah, it's yeah. good to have those characters back. Well, George Lucas's character, he's also... They gave him a badass character. You know, he, he was great. He, he was like Liam Neeson in uh, Taken. Yeah. He, he, he finds evidence with the blood, hunts him down, guns, and he's like, yeah, and, and he's a badass at taking cover. He's moving yep. so much quicker than I imagine George Lucas can, can move. Yeah. Um, oh, this is before the retirement. Yeah, and we also had uh, Greedo coming to the Clone Wars. What did yep. you think of seeing him? It was, uh, it was cool. I thought it was weird that he didn't speak in whatever, Rodian. Yeah. Because when he's talking to Han, he only speaks in Rodian. Yeah, he only speaks in Rodian. So, and, um, but in Phantom Menace, he speaks in... You know, galactic basic. Yeah. But why, you know what I mean? So it's been, it's been said that basic is like English and Hatiz is like Spanish. So most people speak Spanish and this universe speak both. Um, I imagine when in 1977, probably when he uh, did Greedo, he might not even been thinking about it. You know what I mean? But well, as yeah, a, but why would he change it though, is what I'm saying. Uh, well, in a kid's show, most of the time, except for Jabba, they always speak English or basic in, in most cases. What's the point? I, I don't know. I mean, uh, or, or like I said, in episode one, we have other guys speak different languages, but we also have Greedo speak English. So I think, yeah. in, I think the Phantom Menace, he, maybe he just said, oh, yeah, he can speak English too. Like in the books, Vader goes to see Jabba and Jabba's talking to him and Vader says, speak basic. And Vader speaks basic. I mean, Jabba speaks basic. So he can speak basic, but he just can't stand the can't stand basic, you know? He yeah. thinks it's a disgusting. <laughs> he says it's like dirt swirling around his mouth when he speaks basic. Yeah. It's like I said, it's kind of Vader's power play. Yeah. Play. Um, which also establishes uh, that Vader does go to, because the Emperor commands him to go there because something's happening with the, the, the huts and the trade routes or something like that. Mm -hmm. And Jabba's like saying, well, fuck you, or like we're closing off these trade routes. So Vader has to go there to tell him that no, he can't close them off. Um, so, uh, yeah, we have more Trade Federation stuff. And it always does really well, I think, when it's an animation and it's snappy and the story's a little quicker. But we saw a Trade Federation ship. We had the same conference room that we saw from the Phantom Menace. What did you think of seeing the cantina? Yeah, that was cool. It looked pretty empty. Yeah. But yeah, and you know what? You're right. Uh, because when they actually... like, So you and I, we've seen, obviously, the Book of Boba Fett and the Mandalorian. We have seen live-action Star Wars like show the cantina again. But um, like when this came out, we haven't seen the cantina since 1977. Book of Boba Fett wasn't the same cantina, though, right? Because they weren't in Mos Eisley. They were in the... Uh, no, you're Mos right. Or something you, like no, that. You, uh, I believe you're right. I mean, there's something... Uh, they still had a cantina there. But... They had a cantina. I thought we did see a cantina in, in the Mandalorian. I think we saw... Mandalorian, it. probably. I just don't yeah. remember if they saw Mos Eisley or not, but I know Mos Espa. Yeah. You saw that, and then yeah. Book of Boba Fett, you also had everything with Cobb Vanth. And yeah, the but we get that iconography, kind of, you know, that yeah. you don't have since that first movie that's like more of a, I think it's more of a Western than episode five and six <clears throat> in some ways, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get that. It's more of a frontier film. Yeah. So, um, you know, like the animators are really excited to, to actually animate and show like the cantina because, you know, obviously they're all huge fans of it and we haven't seen it in so long. But when they went back and looked at all the original pictures, like it was really empty. So and all the characters in it, are, and all the characters that are in it are just like people wearing costumes from like Star Trek and ET and all these different things. So like we'd have a shot over here, and then we'd have everyone cluster here, and then when we would show like a shot from the other angle, we had to have everyone move over here, change orders, put on different masks. Mm -hmm. But it was actually pretty empty, and they didn't have a lot of stuff. So they decided, you know what? Let's just make it kind of empty. Like this is the afternoon. There's not a lot of people here yet. Yeah, you know, even so, outside, it wasn't like bustling. No, it wasn't. Um, no, but I thought it was pretty sweet. It's good to see Road of the Hut again, so you know he's still around. And you have a good question. And I can say that, to my knowledge, um, I'm not sure they have even talked about what happens to Rhoda and why he's not in the... I mean, it's possible, I guess, that he sends him to go do other things. If, yeah, in the book of Rhoda, but they have long have lives. Like, they have really long lives, so he might still be a kid, just kind of like uh, Yoda. Yoda's the book of Boba Fett, the other two huts that came back and tried to challenge him. Yeah. That hired... Uh, or that... Black haired Wookiee. Ah, uh, Chrysanthemum Black. Yeah. Which is, he was fucking sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, they hired him to come in and take out Boba mm -hmm. and shit. And yeah. So I mean, the Huts might have sent, you know, Jaw may have sent him somewhere else yeah. to continue his education. Yeah. But you're right, he may just be growing slowly because Yoda's race grows very slowly and lives mm -hmm. a lot longer. Yeah. But they mature a lot slower. Yes, yes. So. Um, yeah, Greed is going down a dark path. We all know what happens to him in the end. Yeah, and it's not a very glamorous thing. 
So obviously Jabba forgives them here, you know? Yeah. So I'm wondering... Or if it could be for show, Jabba. Well, after the book of Boba like Fett... you got caught. Yeah. You brought this to my doorstep, you got caught. Yeah. So. Well, after the book of Boba Fett, it really established like how much power and respect Jabba commanded. He was able to keep everyone together and in line for decades and decades. Mm -hmm. So I, I just thought that was really cool. Because he's like a bad guy, but he's not like... He's not evil. He's just a drug lord. And yeah. he doesn't allow crime unless it's his crime you know what i mean <laughs> like if someone breaks off it's like like and it's like kind of old testament justice like if you steal cut off your hand it's it's a it's a he's pretty hardcore about keeping the law like when i read the books yeah but like i said he's obviously breaks the law all the time yeah but i just think it's really cool it just adds pay. more to java you don't pay what you fucking know him yeah then... exactly then he'll add interest he'll, he'll kill you it'll freeze you in carbonite um yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I don't got anything else. I thought it was a good one. It was cool to see the Pantorans again, like you said, Chuchi. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get anything else, sir. You? I don't know. That's it. All right, thanks everyone for tuning in. If you like what we do here, like, subscribe, mm. Instagram, Twitter, Boom. Patreon, <gasps> early access, full length, you name it, we may not have it. We'll see. <laughs>